This time on K6 UDA Radio, I'm going to answer your questions about ham radio. Today, I'm answering a few questions uh, from you guys. And uh, the first one comes from the Cyber Rat Rodent. Here's a complicated question from a non-ham radio guy. In case World War III happens, or I get pissed at cell phones enough, what ham radio can get me to the North Pole, the South Pole, and the equator with clarity of sound and encryption capability? A mobile and a base, please. I'm not interested in FCC licensing. In fact, to avoid it at all costs, you don't want to be on their radar. It is our only option for free speech without restrictions, and you all pray to your one religion left statism. I know why the feds put licensing in, so that you don't interfere with their side of the broadband. NSA, FBI, CIA, DOD, EMS, NG, LEO. That I can follow in a bay. Okay, rat. I can call you rat, can I? Let's take, uh, I'm going to take your question. I'm going to break it up into three parts. The first part. You, uh, you want to know which ham radio is going to get you to the North Pole, the South Pole, and the Equator. That really depends. You see, almost any HF radio on the market is capable of getting to those things as long as you have an antenna system and the propagation to get you there. Let's start with the antenna. Now there is a ton of different antenna designs out there and to get you where you want to go you're going to need a shit ton of horsepower and this is what I mean about horsepower. It's all in the antenna. This is K3LR, probably one of the most premier contest stations in the world and this is their 40 meter stack. Now this is the kind of antenna that will get you from the North Pole to the South Pole to the equator and all over the world. Now if you've got an engineering degree and hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend to get an antenna system like this, I bow to you my friend. Uh, have a great time and I am envious. I don't know where you live. You might live in a city, you might live, uh, you might live in, a, in the country, or you might be at a retreat location somewhere that is like a total off-grid secret. Regardless of where you are, you need to get an antenna that's going to be able to get you the proper, uh, the proper bounce off the ionosphere on an HF frequency. And to do that, you're going to have to have enough either wire up in the sky or enough antenna and beams to get you specifically where you want to go. Let's just say you're somewhere in the middle of the United States and you want to hit the equator. Well, the equator is a big long place, so it depends upon where along the equator you want to get. Um, you're going to most likely have to have a beam or a stacked set of beams. And in order to get the right bounce off the ionosphere to get you, well, let's say from the Northern Hemisphere here in the U.S., if you want to hit the South Pole, you're going to need to have enough bounce and enough angle of the dangle to get you up into the ionosphere to bounce and come down on the other side of the planet. Propagation plays a huge part of this and a lot of times propagation just isn't going to work and it doesn't matter 
what kind of an antenna you have, it just isn't going to work. Now normally we would think of a radio wave as something that goes from one antenna to the other, but because of the curvature of the Earth, you're going to need to bounce your radio signal off the ionosphere at the proper angle to make it all the way around the world or halfway around the world and get the signal where you want it to go. And yes, you're going to need to have to, the capability to operate more than one frequency because in the middle of the daytime, 40 meters is not going to get you very far at all. But at night, 40 meters is going to get you quite far. 20 meters during the day can get you damn near around the world, but not at night. So you, you feeling me here? Oh yeah, the antenna that you're gonna need, you're gonna have to make room for something in the neighborhood-ish of a 50 to 60 foot circumference if you just wanna do 40 through 10 with a couple of uh, a couple of specific beams in there, you can you might be able to stack them. But honestly, you're going to be a lot better off uh, if you've got separate towers and you've got an array of antennas. As far as the radios you want, any of the new radios are going to be great. They're going to work for you. You want clarity of sound and encryption capability. That brings me to number two. Clarity of sound, I don't know what you mean by that exactly. Uh, if you want it to sound like FM or an AM broadcast station, probably ain't gonna happen. Not with, uh, not with any ham radio. And honestly, you could take an AM station with 50,000 watts and a 150 foot tower, and you're not getting to the North Pole the South Pole and the equator with that. And I don't know of any ham radio system in the world that's going to get you that quality of sound. Encryption capability. I don't know exactly what you mean by encryption. Uh, if you want hardware encryption, software encryption, or social encryption. Hardware encryption is going to be a little bit tough for you to do because we can't have ham radio gear that's encrypted by law. So none of the manufacturers are making stuff that, uh, that, is, that will encrypt your transmission. Hell, the government can barely uh, encrypt their transmissions. <laughs> Software encryption, you might have the possibility if you're doing something under SDR, you're doing something digitally, you might have the, the capability or you might be able to get the capability to do some kind of encryption on the software side, which means you're going to have to run it through a processor, an external processor, and possibly a computer. I don't know nothing about that. So if anybody's with the FCC that's listening to me, I got no idea how to do that. I just know that you guys can do it. Social encryption. Now, here's something that you can do something about. There has been encryption going on since the beginning of time. People don't want to, uh, people don't want to discuss something in, you know, in public. Uh, you know, it can be as simple as, well, you know, that thing that we were talking about on the phone <laughs> up to uh, having secret codes that you could talk on. Now, according to the FCC in ham radio, you're not allowed to encrypt your conversations. You're not allowed to use codes that obscure the conversation because it's all supposed to be open for all ham use. But seeing as that you don't intend on getting a license anyway, 
I don't see any problem in you using social encryption to encrypt your conversation with the people who won't talk to you anyway. And number three, let's go into that. Um, like I just said, you're going to talk on a radio and you're going to say, hey, hello, hello, this is the cyber rodent. I want to talk to you. I have important information about the end of the world. I get the whole thing about you don't want to be on another government list, all that good stuff. You don't want the government knowing what you're doing. You don't want them uh, censoring you. I get that. The government can't flip the switch and turn off your ham radio. Hell, they can't even tell where you're operating from if you're good enough. But if you don't have that license in the first place, nobody in the ham radio world is going to talk to you. They just will not. Um, you can't make up a call sign and fool us either. Because as soon as, as soon as you get on the radio and you call, you call somebody or you answer somebody, unless they're your, your buddy, um, they're just going to make it a very short and sweet conversation. They're going to look up your call sign online and when they don't find it, they're going to say, hey, there's no record of you. You're going to go, ah. And that's going to be about the end of the conversation. And I have this conversation with a lot of my prepper friends. It isn't going to kill you to get a, to get a ham radio license. It isn't going to put you on some super secret list. There's, uh, there's a, a million of us in this country and millions of us around the world that have ham radio licenses. And some of these guys are in the most oppressive countries on the planet. I hope I answered your question to the best of my ability. So the original plan here for my uh, 7,500 subscriber giveaway was to uh, wait till we had 200 entries into the Chameleon P-Loop um, giveaway. Well, it's been a couple of weeks, didn't get it. I wanna get this thing out to one of you guys. So there were 83 entries, so I did a random number generator. Number 58 is Kel Jacobson. Kel Jacobson, this now belongs to you. And I'm shipping this out to you as soon as you send me uh, an email with your name, your address, all your contact information, and, uh, and I'll verify that it's really you. I'll get this thing off into the mail for you. And uh, congratulations on uh, winning my 7,500 uh, subscriber thing. I know this was a short video and I only got to one actual question, but you know what? I kind of made it into three and uh, I got to take some time answering it. I hope this answered maybe some questions from some of you new guys about HF and what, you know, ham radio can do, what it can't do. Uh, if you have questions about the hobby, whatever, got questions, leave them in the comments below. I love doing stuff like this, and I will try to get to some more questions on future uh, episodes of the show. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now, and please consider uh, supporting me on Patreon. That would be awesome. That helps keep the, uh, help, helps keep the wheels greased, and helps keep my hard drives running. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got today. Uh, see you next time. Next time, I'll be reviewing uh, this new little guy here. This is the Connect Systems CS380 UHF 
DMR uh, handheld. Anyway, guys, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm Bob, K6UDA73. Later.